so welcome to another video guys today we are going to bring you a transfer roundup part one so you know the transfer market is still going on which is a surprise because this is september 1 and the transfer window should have ended but unfortunately with the pandemic and all the problems the transfer window has been extended to october 1 and it's going to go on so we have started this new series upon the channel that we are going to report the transfer news and not just chelsea related but towards the whole club so i think i wish you guys like it you guys support it and we are going to bring regular content to you all about the transfer rumors that have been coming in so today we are going to discuss about the transfer rumors that we received on uh, three or four days back everybody has been on twitter and they would have absolutely knew about these rumors that i'm going to speak now and guys we've also stuck upon a photo where the source who has given this news has been uh, attached here so you know who has given this news and he's a very reliable person you all know Fabrizio Romano so we've attached the picture so you know who was the person who broke the news and we are just trying to communicate it towards you so first of all let's start with not a transfer news but a bit of news about Chelsea and it's been that last week we were receiving that Chelsea might go towards a gold kit on Twitter and there were certain fans interacting upon that but unfortunately guys it's not come true and we have to see that horrendous kit horrendous kit to be worn by our guys now if you're lifting the Premier League you're becoming the champions then any kit is good if this kit if we wear this kit in the final and we win it this kit will become legendary but overall this is one of the most horrendous the worst kit I've seen as a Chelsea fan and see guys at first we thought it's not official Chelsea have still not made it official but according to some people uh, it's been shown on Nike store and also Chelsea footy headlines have shown this kit so I think they are very reliable when it comes to kit so this is the kit for Chelsea and I think it's nothing short of embarrassing you can literally call us Crystal Palace this season Crystal Palace versus Brighton the first match and we might see this kid being worn against Brighton because we can't wear a home and away kit against them. So let's go away from the disappointment now to some other Chelsea news. So I think uh, Kante we all know has been, uh, it's been a doubt whether Kante should remain at Chelsea or not because Kante last season had a very injury riddle season. But we also shouldn't forget how good of a player he is. So there have been rumours, some, now we all don't trust upon Sun but there have been rumours that Chelsea have put him on the transfer list, some have refuted that. So we don't know but one thing we do sure know is that for a 28-29 year old if Chelsea receive a 60 million offer they're not going to reject it. That's the way we are run. We don't give players above 30 big big contracts and I think they're going to be run like that. So there were rumors circling around Twitter and all the community that Inter Milan want Antonio uh, N'Golo Kante and we all know Antonio Conte loves N'Golo Kante. But the thing is right now Inter director has put a picture you can see above has come and said that they're not interested. now. Now he's not gonna come and say that I want N'Golo Kante, I will pay Chelsea 50 million or no. He's not like Mind Munich and they're not gonna come out and say they want Kante. But I think he's saying very true in the statement because Inter Milan had spent a lot of money last summer and I don't know will they be able to afford Kante because it's just not about paying 50-60 million. Kante is on around 270 to, uh, 270 to 290k at Chelsea. I think he's the highest paid, pay, uh, paid player at Chelsea and I can't see Inter being able to afford him. So I think I think it's true and I don't think Inter will be going for Kante. So guys we have to continue with Inter and Inter, Inter and Chelsea are certainly getting a good relation. It's that Inter are very close to signing of Kolarov on a season long loan with an option to extend. So with Kolarov the dealers people will say, what an idiot, you dumb why are you making news on Kolarov, we want Chelsea news. But guys Kolarov is left back. Inter have been wanting a left back for a long time and they have been circling around Emerson. They want to get Emerson. Now if they get color off, it's tough to see them going for Emerson. And the thing is Chelsea already have signed Ben Chilwell for 45 million. And Chelsea will try to recoup that money by selling one of Chilwell, uh, sorry, one of Alonso and Emerson to recoup the money for Chilwell. And I think there were rumors Chelsea were trying to sell Emerson for 20 million to get some money but unfortunately now it looks tough. Now we must remember, we must remember that Inter last year had Biragi on loan from Fiorentina and sent Delbert the other way on loan. Right now that deal has not been extended so if it does not extend then I can still see them making move for Emerson. 
but otherwise Chelsea will have to look for other buyers for Emerson. Now let's move to another news for Chelsea and that's to Havertz and I think I'm going to become old until Havertz is announced. Chelsea have done such a good business but Havertz is just not getting announced and it's pinching when will he be announced. But you can see the source above, I think we all know the deal has been agreed but just Leverkusen are looking for replacements so it's not getting announced. So I hope Havertz is announced very quickly because I'm frustrated. 3 p.m. Havertz announcement, 4 p.m. Havertz announcement. So it's frustrating. We wish Chelsea announced it properly, and then we can really get our celebrations. So guys, now let's move on from the Chelsea news. You all will be frustrated. He's talking about his favorite club. So we move to Aston Villa. Now Aston Villa are very very close, according to sources, to sign Romero for eight million. Now this is a very very good signing. But also not a big deal for United because United have already have uh, Dean Henderson, David De Gea. For them, it doesn't make sense to have Romero. Romero, on the other hand, has been a very reliable keeper and he deserves a chance to be number one for some club. And I think that is that club. He's going to play regularly up there. He's going to be a lead player, and it makes a good deal for United if they can get good money for players like Romero, Smalling, Lingard, Pereira. They might recoup some money to sign Sancho. So. It's a win-win deal for both parties. And the second deal that Aston Villa are on the verge of completing is Matty Cash for 14 million, which can extend to 16 million with add-ons. Another good deal for a championship player who played really well last season. And see guys, even in today's market, 50 million is a very low price. A low risk signing and Aston Villa for me are moving in the right direction. Romero adds experience and a good uh, reliable keeper. And Matty Cash is a good option to have. Now let's move to the theater of dreams was one of the best club in the world in terms of commercial, the biggest club in the world, Man United. So with Man United, they have confirmed the signing of Van de Beek. Van de Beek has been confirmed by Manchester United. It came out of the blue. It was all doom and gloomy. Will United sign a player? Will we sign a player? Chelsea are signing this, Chelsea are signing that, Arsenal are signing this, Arsenal are signing that. Gabriel rejected us. It's not going to be good. And suddenly, would have a strike. And United have confirmed the signing of Van de Beek, a very good player for 40 million, going to add a very good depth to the midfield. We might also see a change of formation to Diamond, you never know. Their Ole might try to get all these players play in a certain system, but it's a very, very good signing. You don't associate that with Edward Ward, but well done. Good signing, sir. And on the other hand, the next news for United is about Chris Smalling, and it looks like he might be closing in on his move away from United. Now Smalling had a very very good year at AS Roma and people will be saying let's play Chris Smalling and let's play Mike Spawning in words of Luis Manal but unfortunately with United it doesn't make sense because unfortunately they've already paid 80 million for a player and you have to pay that player regularly and in that same way they have players like Tuanza, Belinda Love they're also trying to circle for Upamecano if not this year then next year so it makes sense for both parties to get separate ways. Smalling can get regular chances and he's a very good reliable player and United go their own way and use the Smalling money on other players. So now let's go on guys towards the Everton news. Now Everton have been doing some fantastic business. Everton have been making every rival fan jealous. Now Everton have done this in the past and what happened? Nothing. They never went a step ahead. Everton have spent more than Chelsea in the last some years and where are they? Out of top 10. But this year, they have Carlo Ancelotti, a very, very good manager and this time the signings look in very, very good direction. Now guys, what was the Everton midfield last year? Andre Gomez, Gilfie Sigurdsson, Tom Davis. That was their midfield. Now their midfield will be James Rodriguez, Alan, Takure. That's a massive improvement. That's a big improvement. Now, unfortunately, even in my Premier League review, I told that Bedford, Norwich, Bournemouth are going to lose some of their players, and Takure looks like that. It's good money for Everton to get a player like 25 million in Takure. If Bedford stayed up in the Premier League, Everton might have to pay 40 50 million, but that's what happens when you're relegated. Should have done better, should have stayed, but unfortunately what's happened has happened. So this was Everton news guys. Let's move towards City. Now City have been circling around Lionel Messi. 
Messi, Kevin De Bruyne, Sergio Aguero, Raheem Sterling. But let's move aside from the teams because we don't know will Messi sign for them or not. The biggest problem that City have had in some years is defense. Even in the title victories, the biggest weakest point was defense. And last year, it was very open, easily scoreable. But now let's see what City are going to do. And City have already signed Nathan Ake. Now Nathan Ake is Nathan Ake better than Ota Mendy? 200%. Is Nathan Ake better than Stones? 300%. I'm sorry guys for the joke, but he is better. But is Nathan Ake a big difference from getting City to win the Premier League? No, he isn't. City need another proven centre back. And who is better than Kuli Bale? And as per the source, we know how outspoken Laurentin is. He did the same with Jorginho Sarisaga, used to make some statements and come out and he said that they are ready to sell Koulibaly for the right price. Now will City pay the right price or will City look elsewhere? That's to see. Now we move on to the champions, Liverpool. Now you all know Bayern Munich, they won the Champions League, destroyed everyone. Bayern Munich are a fantastic, fantastic team and Thiago was very instrumental in winning the trophy. Now Thiago has been linked to Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp is a big big fan. I'm stunned that a manager who won you the Premier League, Champions League, and you're not backing that guy. For 25 million, if you're not signing Thiago, I'm, I'm sorry. Liverpool fans might not like this, but you have to show ambition. This is pathetic from Liverpool if they're, if they're thinking that they can get Thiago for 15 million. If Klopp wants him, you get him. Whether Ginny Van Adam stays, whether he goes to Barcelona, no care. Thiago is a player you should go. Now, it's been rumours that United are also in with Thiago and this will even make this more interesting. Two big rivals interested for a very, very good player. Now, for United, he will be a better player to play instead of Matic and for Liverpool, he's going to be a big improvement. Now, let's see what happens. Now, we go to Arsenal and guys with Arsenal is just confirmation. They have sent Gabriel. Now the announcement was very weird, 8 minute video with uh, Luis and William having a video call but leave it aside. It's a good signing for Arsenal, as a Chelsea fan that's a good signing for them. Because Arsenal's biggest Achilles heel has been defence. It's been comical, Arteta is trying to improve it but unfortunately how can you turn a stone into gold? It's impossible. In the same way improving Arsenal defence forever is impossible in the Arteta but with players like Gabriel and Saliba. Even if they finish out of Champions League place next season, they have got a good bunch of players who are only going to get, uh, going to develop every year, and their value is only going to get up and up and up and up. So this is a very very good signing for Arsenal, and especially for not the big money that we see in today's market. And the final news, guys, is about Leicester City. Leicester City are closing in the signing of the Belgian right back Castagne from Atalanta. So it's a very very good signing from my point of view. I don't know. I have not watched uh, so much of the player but I can tell you one thing that Leicester struggled last year a lot when Ricardo Pereira got injured. When Ben Chilwell got injured. Leicester might have been playing Bayern Munich next season. Barcelona. But they will be playing Wi-Fi Password next season. That's what happens. So you need to increase the depth of the squad and let's see what Leicester do. So guys this brings an end to our transfer roundup of this season, how every club had done deals this season. I hope, I really hope you enjoyed all this, this series. We are going to bring regular content and I hope you enjoy it, hope you interact, hope you bring your own opinions whether this signing is good, whether this signing is bad, so we can just increase our community and have a good, good interactions about each other. So guys, if you have liked it, please, please like the video, support the small guy, please subscribe and if you really like me, you really tolerated me, then please hit the bell notification button so that you can get my regular content and get updates upon it. So thank you very much guys and we are going to bring part 2 very quickly. Thank you.